Spider-Man has been, and probably always will be, one of Marvel's most famous characters, whether that's from the movies, the cartoons, the video games, or just the good old-fashioned comic books, Spider-Man is here to stay. However, as hard as it may be to believe now, there was in fact a time where a movie about Spider-Man seemed impossible. Several directors and studios would try their hand at making their own Spider-Man movie, including famed low-budget movie director Roger Corman. So, what if Roger Corman's Spider-Man movie was made? In 1982, Roger Corman, the man behind low-budget but critically well-received movies like The Pit and the Pendulum, was tasked with trying to get a big-budget feature film made about Spider-Man. Rights to Spider-Man were at the time being held by Orion Pictures. Corman was chosen due to being a huge fan of the Spider-Man comics, as well as for being able to make financially profitable films on a shoestring budget. Orion was hoping that they could replicate the recent success of the first two Christopher Reeve Superman movies and establish their own superhero icon for the big screen. Corman wanted the story to be a as faithful to the comics as possible, knowing Hollywood's tendency to change a lot from the source material, so Corman decided to hire Stan Lee himself to write the movie's script. While the entire script has sadly not been released as far as I know, his version of the movie would have been the complete origin story, including Uncle Ben's death, Peter being bitten by the radioactive spider, and his burgeoning romance with Mary Jane Watson. Doc Ock was expected to be the movie's main antagonist, though apparently there would have also been a few nods of the still ongoing Cold War, and would have featured Spider-Man somehow preventing nuclear warfare. While never officially stated, I do believe that Orion intended to have Nicholas Hammond, who had previously played Spider-Man in the TV show, and both of the the TV movies reprise his role for the theatrical movie too. However, Orion wasn't going to be able to hold on to the rights for long, and what they really, really needed was everything to just work out perfectly, but sadly for them, that's not what happened at all. Corman and Stanley reportedly clashed with one another a lot on the scale of the project, with Corman wanting to go low budget to ensure a high profit margin, while Stanley wanted to be big and epic, a true Hollywood summer blockbuster. And now in the end, the fighting caused the project to get delayed, and the rights would end up lapsing back to Marvel Comics. So what do I think of Orion Picture Spider-Man? Um, okay, so I'm a little bit split, because on one hand, Stan Lee wrote the script for this movie. Stan Lee wrote the script for this movie. I cannot reiterate that enough. So I do think, at least from a script perspective, this movie would have been gold. Like, I think that as long as they got good actors in the role, then this movie would have no reason to be terrible. I mean, as long as the Cold War references were kept to a minimum, which just sounds like they wouldn't have been, but hopefully they, they would still be able to make it work. Hopefully Stanley would have been able to make it work. Um, and Nicholas Hammond, he's a pretty underrated Spider-Man in my opinion. Not enough people talk about him. I mean, a lot of people just assume that Tobey Maguire was the first ever live-action Spider-Man, and I have to keep reminding people about Nicholas Hammond, because most people don't even know that he ever played Spider-Man, so, you know, I have to remind people about that. And I do think he was pretty underrated in the role from what I've seen of him, which isn't much, because again, I was born in the 2000s, so it's not like I was a around when his show was airing, but, you know, from what I've seen of him, I thought he was kind of underrated, even with the low budget. Now, with a higher budget, I think that he could have really been a great Spider-Man. However, there are technical limitations. I mean, this movie would have been made in the early 80s, and that's where I'm worried about this movie, because I just don't know how well it would hold up. And I've gone on record to say that I don't think production value and, you know, graphics uh, movie really matter that much. Like, it, bad CGI, in my opinion, doesn't ruin a movie 
movie as long as the rest of it's good. Now, this is pre-CGI. Like, yeah, Tron had just come out, but they weren't going to use Tron CGI in a Spider-Man movie. That wasn't going to happen. So, um, you know, I don't know how well this movie would hold up from a technical perspective. It probably wouldn't hold up very well at all. Um, but, you know, who cares? I mean, the Superman movies don't hold up that well, graphic-wise, because, uh, you know, the blue screen's pretty obvious. But nobody cares, you know? People still love the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. So I see no reason why this movie couldn't have gone the same camp. Um, but the main issue, I think, technical-wise of this movie would be the swinging and the costume. And, like, if they were going to do the Green Goblin, like, there's no way they would be able to make that look convincing. Like, the glider would look so fake. I'm sorry. Um, like, I'm trying to be nice, because I know about the time period. I know that's, you know, that's what they had. Um, and I do think that, you know, with the right people involved, this could have been great. And Roger Corman's a great director, and as long as Stan Lee got his way and this movie was, was like, big budget, I think it could have been great. Because we all know what happened when, you know, Roger Corman tried to go low budget with Fantastic Four. Oh, boy, did that go great. Um, <laughs> so maybe it's for the best that, you know, it was big budget. And I have no reason to think why it wouldn't be. I mean, Spider-Man was, was selling, like, hotcakes even back then. And, you know, Ryan went out of their way to buy the rights to Spider-Man. And, you know, they, they, they allowed Stan Lee to write the script. So it's, it's clear to me that there was a lot of passion for this project. And, you know, as I said, Roger Corman was a Spider-Man fan. So, like, I, you know, as long as the budget was good, I think this movie could have been great. Um, as I said, Nicholas Hammond underrated as Spider-Man. It's not confirmed if he was actually playing him. It could have been somebody else, but who knows, really? I mean, the 80s had a great wealth of teenage actors, so who knows? It could have it could have been one of, you know, the John Hughes actors playing Spider-Man. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I do think an 80s Spider-Man doesn't sound impossible. Um, I think with the right people involved in the high budget, this could have been great, and it did have good people involved. Roger Corman, as I said, Spider-Man fan, great director. Nicholas Hammond, underrated Spider-Man actor. Stan Lee himself writing the script. Like, this movie has so much going for it. All it needs is a high budget, and it could have been fantastic. At least in my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below what you would have thought of Roger Corman's Spider-Man. Do you think that the budget would have hurt the movie, or do you think that it would have been great despite that, like I do? Uh, let me know about that in the comments down below. Also, give me more what-if recommendations in the comments down below about Spider-Man or any other Marvel characters or any non-Marvel characters, and I will try to do my best with, with the request. I'll see if I can get to it as quickly as I can. Also, remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms. And speaking of social media, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Rinsler underscore Productions, and don't forget to ring that notification bell and stay updated on all of my future videos. Remember, I upload a brand new video every single morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I'll see you all tomorrow morning in the next video.